It must be really interesting making settings for a game. Back in the days of my childhood, you know, when they still insisted that pro wrestling was super real, they used to have the ice levels, the water world, the sky level, you know, all that stuff. They do still do that with some games. I mean, they have to with Star Wars because they've got the ice planet, the desert planet, the good city planet, the bad city planet, also the CGI planet. But as games have become more realistic, they've trended towards more realistic settings. Sort of, like Fallout 3's reconstruction of Washington, D.C. With this kind of thing, it's simple to see why these games develop such large staff commitments. It takes a team to really conceptualize how all this stuff is going to go together. Of course, when a game is being prepared for a new console, and the console's not even released yet, there's a lot of problems. The development team doesn't really know what all the specs are going to be, so they may have all their stuff conceptualized, but they don't know how to put it together yet. They can work on some things and try to do some other stuff, but then if something changes, they have to go back and tear things apart and start over. This is a big deal when you've got a lot of time constraints and budget concerns. It was especially noticeable during the early eras of the PS3 and the Xbox 360 because those games had a lot of desert levels, kinda, or just less content. And while Soul Reaver 2 certainly wasn't that bad, it's no secret that the game was rushed out the door a bit. It suffers from it, the clunky combat is one thing, but also there's a few nondescript hallways and corridors that you have to run through. But of course I'd be lying if I were to say that that was unique to Soul Reaver 2. And the good stuff is good. The temples are interesting, they have their own characteristics, they kind of fit with what you'd expect from their element. That's why it's too bad that more of the game didn't get finished. I'd really like to see more of the temples. But I suppose it is a good count in the game's favor if I want to see more. So anyway, let's get back to it. Hello everyone, I'm Taylor. And I am Ray. And I am the fairest one of them all. Yes. That's Peyton. So you finally managed to kill Snow White, huh? You sure the woodsman didn't just bring you a pig's heart? Ha! Yes. The queen from that story was a fool. Was she not the queen and therefore a politician? Yes. I have given a tax break to the entire woodcutting industry. The CEO has carried out the deed with extreme prejudice. Yes. Sounds like good old-fashioned job creation. I believe that they paid the minimum wage to whoever did the murder. Yes, but it was a job created, yes. That's a surprising turn of efficient government, really. You know, normally you'd give a contract like that, and if you were paying by the hour, then the guy would just go to sleep in his truck for a while, then maybe kind of hunt around for Snow White, then, you know, clock out, then show up the next day. Really stretch it out into a living. So there's a bunch of these horrible monsters in this swamp, and I just... I don't know why. Why do they exist? Well, Ray, when one horrible asymmetric abomination loves another horrible asymmetric abomination... You don't know if they're capable of love? They're horrible abominations! Maybe they reproduce by budding! Aside from the fact that complex organisms can't really reproduce by budding very well, I don't actually know how you'd produce this kind of thing in just a couple thousand years. Is it the pillars? Yes? You break them and they cause radiation poisoning? Maybe there was some kind of magical device in the Darkness Shrine, and now it's broken and it's radiating something. Well, shouldn't they be dark then? Because it was darkness magic. I don't know how darkness magic works, Taylor. I don't even know what these things were supposed to be in the first place before they became mutants. I think they are trees, maybe. Guys, trees? Like they might be plants? Well, they cannot be real predators because look at how slow and stupid they are. Guys. Yeah, Peyton's right. I don't think that thing can move and attack you at the same time. I don't think those things could get the drop on an alligator. Uh, no, see, an alligator, that's what they should have had. Those are good swamp monsters. For a game? I kind of imagine Raziel just walking along through the swamp, and then an alligator jumps out, grabs him, and pulls him under the water. Just think of the look that would be on Raziel's face. Of all the ways a vampire could be killed, killed by alligator is like one of the least dignified. Most vampires are weak to water, so if an alligator grabbed a vampire, the vampire would burst into flames as soon as the alligator pulled him in. That sounds the result as a very surprised alligator. Guys. I bet that's not in the pamphlet. When you sign that contract with the devil to become a vampire, they don't tell you alligator attacks may become twice as deadly. If you cannot survive alligator attacks, then what is the point of even being a vampire? You still become super strong. So what? I am super strong. That does not go on my resume. Yes, I am not saving Lois Lane. You can turn into a bat. What good is becoming a bat? Yes, why do I care for this? Some people would think you're adorable. If I cared for that, I would wear adorable shoes. Yes. It appeared the walls of this cliff had become striated, and thus, the stupid powers of my stupid little brother Zaphon would work. Zaphon's climbing abilities were situational at best, much like Zaphon himself. But I would climb this wall. What is it about these walls that makes them specifically the ones that you can climb? Yes. Well, they got lines in them, so... 
Raziel can just sort of stick his hands in the lines, maybe? Maybe the soil is really soft. How come Zaphon's powers don't work like a spider, you know, with Van der Waal's interactions? I don't think those forces would be strong enough to hold Raziel up. Guys, someone has to explain. Oh, I... Well, you see... Geckos use this thing called Van der Waals forces to climb walls. I don't know if spiders use it, that might be wrong, but the point is that geckos totally do. Van der Waals forces is when you've got a molecule and it's neutral electrically, like it's got oxygen to hydrogen, that's neutral, but the oxygen still has a partial negative charge. So they call that a dipole, when you've got one side of a molecule that's electrically charged. Animals like geckos can actually use that little bit of charge to stick to walls, that's how they climb. No, yes, the spider thing is not wrong. Spiders use the van der Waals forces. Yes, but they also use friction. Oh, okay, uh, I can explain that then. So, basically what it is, is that spiders use van der Waals forces to stick to the wall in the first place, but their little hairs also create a high friction coefficient. That means that the force of friction is basically higher, so the spider can't slip. I think I might need a diagram on this one. Oh gosh, I don't know, this one's kinda hard. It's got chemistry and physics together. I think it is simple to say that maybe the wall has more friction. That's why Raziel does not slip. Guys. I guess one way to think about it is, imagine you've got a magnet, and you put it on your fridge, and it's a really crappy magnet, so it just kinda slides down with the force of gravity. If your fridge had a rough enough surface, then friction could actually keep the magnet from sliding down. So Raziel is basically a crappy magnet, is what you're saying? Basically, yes. In other words, he killed his brother in cold blood to steal his power of being a crappy magnet that only climbs rough surfaces. Yes. If you ask me, you know, I think that Raziel's power to fly was the only one that was really good. Well, it was Raziel's power. It was the only power he was going to be really good at. And of course, it was the power that Kane sabotaged! Oh my god, doesn't it just make you angry? We should kill Kane! Guys, come on. We're better spawns of Satan than that now. I found myself in a quaint little hamlet somewhere. I had to wonder why this town decided to build a gate that faced a pathway that led to a sheer cliff base. Also, what were these people eating? You know, this is the second time. The second time that a demon has dropped in in the middle of Raziel monologuing. You think they could get some patience? I know, right? And what are these demons in a hurry about, you know? I know that they really can't do much besides kill people. I mean, if you have blades for hands, what are you gonna do? I think they need to ambush Raziel more efficiently. Yes. Do not teleport directly on top of Raziel and scream, CURSE YOU! That gives it away, Raziel knows you are attacking. Instead, teleport someplace far away, wait behind the rock, and when Raziel rounds the corner, leap out and barf acid on him! Yes. While I agree that that would be more efficient for the demons, I think that would be substantially more obnoxious for the player. Well, I don't know. If you think about it, there are ways that you could make that work. Like, imagine the demons teleport down, and then they get in a fight with Raziel, and they start to lose, so they retreat, and then Raziel chases them, and then more demons jump out from behind the rocks, and Raziel's cornered. In a cutscene? Because that would be the most obnoxious thing if that happened in a cutscene. No, you could do it in real time. See, what you gotta do is you've gotta set up an orthodox AI, this is one that the monsters usually follow, and then you have an unorthodox AI that looks kinda like the normal AI, but it's a little bit different, so it confuses the player and then gets him killed. Uh, I think that's the kind of theoretical stuff that it would be really hard to program, actually. There's two reasons. The first is that every AI has to kind of follow a pattern, so sooner or later you would recognize it and you wouldn't fall for the trick anymore. The second is that pulling off a successful feint requires that you pay attention to the situation and kind of change your behavior to bait the player. Strategy tricks like that have the potential to really blow up in your face if you can't adjust on the fly. And AI just can't do that, it's not sophisticated enough yet. That's part of the fun though! You know like how in Metal Gear Solid 2 the AI is so dumb it can never get anything right? That's the result of trying to compose an AI that deals with problems. That AI is for people though. It would not be as fun with demons, with people you feel like, these are dumb guys. Yes. They do not belong here. And that is why I feel so much satisfaction for killing them. Yes. It makes them feel kinda human in a really dumb sort of way, but the most fun is figuring out how to confuse their AI and really screw them up. Oh, so what you're asking for is not an AI that can put up a strategy. You're asking for an AI that will try to make a strategy, but it'll be stupid and you'll see through it and never fall for it, and then you'll confuse them with your own strategy. Yes, I want to feel very, very smart for messing up something that is very, very dumb. Okay, well if you put it that way, then yes, I am sure that given enough time, this game could have had AI that was very stupid. Speaking of being very stupid, I think we're lost. No, oh, yes, we are headed in the right direction, there is people here, and as we pass through, we killed many people. Do you think we could stop and ask for directions? Just be like, hey, one of you guys, 
Which way is the town we just came from? How is that gonna help us? The only thing we could do is go back to where we came from. Well, they're not gonna know where Janos' keep is. We'd be like, hey man, I'm looking for Janos' keep. You know, Janos. Janos, the vampire. He died like a couple thousand years ago. There's a keep, but you know, that cathedral, it's got a... Oh yeah, that's overrun with demons. Well... Okay, I'll keep looking. Thanks anyway. It's probably a lot like wandering around Istanbul, asking if you can find Constantinople somewhere. Hey guys, I'm looking for Constantinople. You know, I was here a couple thousand years ago. I'm an eternal vampire, so... I don't keep up with the world, really. I don't know, there's a waterfall here? Did we pass a waterfall earlier? I just ran through it so quick, maybe we're supposed to go up in there. This is shaping up to be a pretty realistic hunt for an ancient piece of architecture that probably vanished several thousand years ago. Why is that? Because we're running in circles out here with no idea where we're supposed to be or what we're doing, and there's probably no keep? Yes. Ray, there's no keep out here. I think Raziel should just go find someplace nice, build himself a mansion because time's not really an object, and then he ought to do whatever it is that vampires do when they have eternity, but no real aims. It's a video game, Taylor. There's no way that the twist is gonna be that there is no keep and you just get lost in the mountains for the rest of the game. At the very least, you'd think they would give you a cutscene. Yes, just explaining that you have wasted your time and you should go outside and read the books. Yes. Also, please buy our sequel, Game Where You Are Still Lost in the Mountains. Legacy of Cain Defiance. The Defiant part is where you expect fun, but then don't have any. I can just picture that on the box as advertisement. Legacy of Cain Defiance. Defies expectations. That one's such a cheesy no-brainer, though. They should really have that on the box no matter what. Do you have the old box? Can we check? No, I don't think I've got it anymore. But like we've said, though, this game is a lot more story-based, so it never really got into misrepresenting what it was. That wasn't that big of an issue during this era of gaming, though. Of course, now we're developing a whole set of terminology to describe the various lies that marketing teams will tell us. One good example is what we'd call a bull shot, which is when they fake a screenshot. <laughs> you are the worst navigator, right? You have led us back to the swamp. Yes. Darn it. How'd I get turned around this badly? You freaking stupid... Yes, this is definitely the swamp. Man, this, this is worse than I thought. I thought that we got out of the hamlet in the right direction, but apparently we went through the wrong gate. It all looks kind of the same, just a bunch of dark hallways made out of stone. But, we're gonna have to use the compass. This is butts. Compasses are butts. But anyway, though, so, bull shots. A bull shot is when a company takes a screenshot, but it's at a really high resolution that no one is realistically gonna be able to play at. Then they scale it down, and they hire an artist to touch it up and make it look better. It is all a thin veneer of lies! Yes. Isn't that sort of thing supposed to be illegal? Like it's false advertising? I don't know. All the companies do it. It's a civil case, though, so you'd have to prove it if you really cared. These stupid freaking dogs! I notice you swing over their heads a lot. Like, Raziel has to try a bunch of times to actually hit the stupid things, but they die in one hit. Well, I can make Raziel focus on someone, but he might as well be closing his eyes and facing away, because all he does is just swing the sword around ahead of him. There's no finesse here. A lot of times I feel lucky just to make contact with the enemy. When you are as strong as Raziel, you do not need to be focused. Yes, you just swing as hard as you can and people come apart. That sort of defies the entire vampire logic, though. You're supposed to be old enough that you get good at stuff. Otherwise, Raziel might as well just be a hippo. A soul-eating hippo that can solve puzzles. Yes, a soul-eating hippo that can solve puzzles. But mainly, Raziel just has this strength and lust for destruction equivalent to a hippo. I mean, he just shows up places, tramples everyone, and then goes back to doing whatever it is that Raziel does. Basically a hippo. Well, of course you know when you are like a hippo, everywhere you go is your territory. Yes, everyone else is infringing. But I think this game would be better if Raziel was the hippo. Yes. You imagine them trying to tell the hippo vampire, Go kill Kane, please. Go, go hippo. Go kill Kane. The hippo does not care for politics of Nazgoth. So what do you give to the hippo? Yes. What is the hippo treat? A girl hippo. Okay, right. Let's, let's suppose that you had a hippo, but it was a vampire and it had wings and it was unkillable, and it ate souls. How would you separate it from a girl hippo? How would you separate it from anything the hippo wanted? Okay, well, suppose maybe you get another hippo and you try to put it in no, the same no, room. No, 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 no. Now you just have two unkillable vampire hippos. Well, I feel like this is about where the Elder God is with his plan, because he's got two unkillable vampires, Cain and Raziel. And that is precisely why it is a terrible plan to get a second hippo to stop the first hippo. What if one hippo just says, you know what? Killing this other hippo is hard. I'm gonna go be a danger to society somewhere else. It is true, you know. Yes, you can be a danger to society anywhere. Hippos are not betta fish. 
they will not kill each other just by virtue of being close to one another. I would know a thing or two about being a danger to society in abstract places. You know those little planes outside of the grocery store, yes? The mechanical ones, they rock back and forth, you put the quarter in. I am forbidden to them! Oh man, I remember that. You know you have to go through a metal detector to get on that thing now? And you can't carry on liquids if they're too big. I had fun in my own way, yes. They are just jealous because I seized more than a quarter's worth of entertainment from their machine. You shouldn't have involved the kids, is all I'm saying. But anyway, here looks like a good place to stop. Thanks for playing with us, everybody. The kids got popsicles at the end, yes.